Well, all of a sudden, I was being breastfed by a man. I was receiving. What? <laughs> was like, you were actually know. getting nourishment from it? <laughs> I was growing. I was getting nourished by a man with like a really great boobs. Wow. And I was getting fed. This one just kind of came out of nowhere. And I was like, whoa, but I liked it. Hey, welcome back. We are not for everyone. I'm Jess. I'm Caroline. And we're a podcast and we're coming back to you another week, another day, another dollar. How are you? (laughs) Uh, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm immediately upset about my hair can I start talking about hair yet like have we yeah. have we done the intro long enough? let's we could either talk about hair or tans or waxing I think those are the three yeah. entry those points are the only those are the only subjects I think I studied in school except I missed <laughs> I missed I missed a lot of the classes on hair um I everyone has to go to YouTube to witness what's happening it's not that bad <laughs> It's so bad. You're a fucking liar. And um, I went, I went and I did what you're supposed to do, which is to pay a professional to cut your hair. But I still miss some of the steps, which is like vetting the person who cuts your hair. I can't even look myself in this camera right now. I went to the same salon I always go to and I always let different people cut my hair and it's that's always been fine. But obviously it's a little bit of Russian roulette. This woman, very super sweet woman, I paid her true american dollars and she um gave me a haircut i certainly could have done myself okay this is what's happening it's you're gonna go and look at this on youtube and you're gonna be like this is generally the same haircut that caroline always gets because kind (laughs) of because usually because usually i cut my own hair that's what my friend (laughs) my friend ashley said and she was like oh i was gonna say i thought you cut it and you did a good job i was like ashley that's not a compliment right to right you're like, I paid like good money for this yeah I paid it's real really dollars. the I think the way I would describe it is like I I assert that it does look cute but I also agree that it is not you because I think it's more of like a hip hipster like yeah. choppy things and dude, choppy layers dude, it's as so opposed choppy. to your your bangs and hair look is way more like preppy American girl doll Samantha like out in the Victorian times. Oh my God, thank you for saying that. Someone else also compared me to Samantha the American Girl doll, but yeah. a vulgar version, which I I really liked that. Compliment, yeah, absolutely. No, Yeah, so right that's the difference. I, it's like at yeah. base level, it's kind of the same thing, but it's not the same thing at all. I look so ugly right now. You know mm-hmm. why it is? Because two, two episodes ago, uh, we made an entire episode about how I was feeling hot on my high horse right. and the Lord Jesus Christ has intervened to knock you down down again no now I look like I host like an alternative um like 80s themed karaoke night in uh, at a bar in Brooklyn that's that sounds really fun though I would go sure totally totally I would go (laughs) totally I would go I'm not gonna host it (laughs) right 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 well how's your hair your hair my hair's greasy as fuck it's super greasy I'm trying I've washed it twice this week usually I would have washed it like four times by now but I'm trying to do the thing that I go in phases with of like oh I should wash my hair less because somebody put it on the internet one time yeah (laughs) why do you sometimes do that like sometimes I start doing that and then I like I I don't stop to ask myself why I'm doing it I'm like like just when I actually love washing my hair that's my meditation time in the shower when I stop washing my hair, I have shorter time in the shower. Then I just sit there for a while. Then I'm like, I don't have any activities to do. Now. Right. It's such a quick shower. And, and then it's like, I, wa- I have to wash my hair less, but also like my hair texture is for sure worse. And it looks for sure worse. It's, it's not oily, but it's for sure not pretty. And then I'm like working. I got this whole system going just to ensure I have ugly hair every day is how it works for me. Right. And then I put in dry shampoo and it just like ever so slightly over the course of the week makes my hair more and more like gray seeming. I was going to say crispy. (laughs) Crispy and gray. Crispy and gray. Just like very slowly because I'm rubbing it in, you know, but like there's just this layer that this film that builds. Yeah, I think. A film, a light film on my hair. The light film. I think I decided this week that it was actually going to be helpful for me to wash my hair less because I would style it, wash it, 
one day, style it, blow dry it and style it that same evening after showering. And then hopefully like extend the use of my styling instead of having to style my hair after every yeah. shampoo. Okay. You know what I mean? So okay, that was okay. the idea, like, but like, yeah, whatever. I mean, what? I don't know. It's just like now it's greasy. So it might be styled. It might have some curl to it. But it, it has does, a film it on it and it's greasy and but it has a it's, film. it's kind like of itchy. Crazy, it's just like a crazy trade-off. <laughs> like having to like I pat gained, it. I gained a film. I remember one time we talked about gray hair. I remember one time sitting in the senior lounge in high school. And this was a period where I was really, it wasn't cool to have thick, dark eyebrows yet. The thick, yeah. dark eyebrows the dark mis- the dark double mustaches that i was born with over each eye um that would that was not cool when we were in high school and i was in the habit of trying to lighten them i don't even know what i lightened them with just like makeup i wasn't dyeing them i was lightening oh, them interesting yeah it wasn't it wasn't something you should do <laughs> wouldn't recommend and, i don't remember yeah, I don't, that but wouldn't recommend i don't i don't think i ever like looked at it in the mirror I don't, or like in the daylight or something. I must have been doing it in like a dark hallway or something. And um, I remember sitting in the senior lounge and Tanya Miller Thomas was like, oh Caroline, God. why are your eyebrows gray? <laughs> <laughs> and I remember she just like said it. I love Tanya. I do And too. I remember, and the, and the worst part is I remember Sheila say, I can't ex- remember exactly what our friend Sheila said, one of my best friends. I remember sweet fucking <laughs> dove Sheila being like, Tanya, you shouldn't say rude things, which oh. means just, like confirming everybody knew well, my eyebrows were gray and it looked weird. And like everyone was agreeing not to talk about it. Right. Sheila's like, that is, it might be true, but it's still rude. <laughs> we keep that to ourselves when someone's vulnerable. That was tough. <laughs> I was like, first of all, this is the first time hearing that they're gray. I actually didn't oh, even think I want to understand what you were eyebrows. putting in them. You Were you putting know. dry shampoo? <laughs> <laughs> maybe my mom yeah, wouldn't let me crispy. yeah my mom wouldn't let me mess with my eyebrows when I was in middle school and high school either I mean it took me forever to get allowed to like shave my legs but then yeah. people were tweezing and waxing the, off their eyebrows the and she mom. was like you need mom. to protect those at all costs like she obviously my family's Lebanese like hairy mm. culture hairy people gifted with eyebrows but my mom over the years like tweezed hers and did all the things because trends and whatever yeah and she really regretted doing that for herself so she was like you will not be touching them they think you're not going to learn your way and fumble what your way through the mistakes that they can I feel like that's the ultimate parent pitfalls they're like oh I'll just tell you where you need to end up it's like nope I gotta fumble my way there you're right oh I I mean you just you just unlocked something that I can't I don't think I'm in an emotional state to talk about today but that is like (laughs) entirely my relationship with my mom is like let me tell you all the things to do because I know right and you can avoid the stumbling and it's like no kind of the stumbling is like probably the point probably the fun you just part end up doing different stumbling you just like turn them on to it's like the stumbling has to happen it's just like in what flavor do you want to stumble yeah. right it's like mom you've never tried to start a podcast so I don't think that you can tell me about this stumbling <laughs> I don't think you get it I don't think, I don't you, think get you get it. a lot of Wait, what I'm doing what age did you start tweezing then your eyebrows um I think I let my mom, I think my mom insisted on tweezing them if I was going to do anything to them in high school. And she would just tweeze the middle and like very, very gently around them in high school, probably okay. like 15. Um, yeah. And then I think once I got to like senior year and college, I started to get them waxed. And now I don't oh, okay. do anything to them. I think after COVID, when like I couldn't <laughs> go to my UD appointments anymore and whatever i just let them grow out and i was like oh shit these are way better and now i just like fix them myself occasionally but i don't really do anything yeah how about you did we we really did have similar moms in a lot of ways Mm. um my mom also forbade me from shaving or waxing. I was like, so you want me to be a fucking pariah? Like, I can't go out like this. Mm-hmm. And I, everyone already got everyone already got their periods before me. I like wanted to get my period so badly. I was I was a year younger than a lot of people. And also just like 
firmly rooted in childhood and I just <laughs> wanted to be included. Like, please let me shave one leg, one leg, please. <laughs> and I remember going and asking her at some point, And of course I'd already started doing it. It was just like feigning the mechanics of asking her permission. Right. And she was like, no, Caroline, if you start now, you'll have to do it the rest of your life. And I remember even Elizabeth, my sister right. yelling at me and being like, you'll have to do it the rest of your life. And I was like, well, jokes on you idiots. I already started. So, <laughs> you know, and, and then with the eyebrows, they were like, yes, we can tell you've started. It looks really bad. It looks really <laughs> bad. It looked so bad. There were major, major chunks missing from my eyebrows. And oh I no. Going. I remember I was in middle school. I must've been like maybe 12. And I remember going into back to school. I like at the end of that weekend and I can't remember who it was, but somebody asked me, they were like, what happened to your eyebrows? <laughs> And the only thing I could think of on the spot, I wasn't like prepared with an alibi. I, the only thing I could think of was um, uh, in Germany, like we lived in Germany when I was younger, all the houses were made of stucco. And I was like, you know how like all, most walls have like all those bumps on them, you know, like those stucco walls. <laughs> like I just ran, I was just like, I just like ran into one of the walls. <laughs> I ran into a stucco no. wall what? and it took, <laughs> I told them, it took the stucco wall, took a bunch of my eyebrows out. And I think the kids were just like, I don't know what that kind of wall is. <laughs> we parted ways. We're not in we're Germany. Like, <laughs> but still, but still, what do you mean? You just brushed your head parallel to the wall? <laughs> like... It wasn't a great story. Um, did you yeah. find yourself having to like make things up like that a lot? Cause my, I don't know. And I wonder what I would have done at that age in a similar situation. Would my inclination to be mm. me to say, to make up some alibi or would my inclination be to just say like, yeah, I messed them up when I tried to tweeze them or something different. I don't know. Like yeah, I, I feel question. like I'm not good at that type of on the spot creativity for a lie I'm such a bad liar yeah. and so like it just I mean I didn't even... do a good job <laughs> I think I've definitely learned I it took me a little while but I definitely learned that like especially with something embarrassing I feel like this is what I've built my whole livelihood off of now yeah is that like I lead with the most embarrassing thing because if you if you lead with the embarrassing thing who's gonna attack you like you're already pathetic like no one's everyone's just gonna be like oh okay listen she doesn't we don't have to push her down anymore she's down totally. um but it's as soon as you're trying to cover it up that it's like that's weird that you're you are eyebrows are crazy and you're lying um, right I didn't yeah. I didn't have that understanding at that age I was just ashamed I was just ashamed yeah lots of shame I the shame is real um I was thinking about that a little like related thought before we started recording I was looking at some of my notes from the past couple weeks and it's it's been pretty dry there's not a lot of uh comedy genius happening over here over the last couple weeks I feel like I've just been like trying to keep my head above water with a lot of things that I have been working on um but I saw a couple bullets in my notes about things <laughs> that have happened recently in my relationship that are like so mundane and some even stupid but they've like felt connective and I was like do I are these interesting or are they just you, like, yes you you have so me at stupid no you have right me at it's kind of I'm like weird. the ice cube thing I feel like that's one of them too like <clears throat> um I love that. A lot of times that. people just try to like portray their relationship as this like romantic like thing. And I'm like, no, let me tell you two yeah. stories from the past <laughs> couple of weeks. Please, please. <laughs> so please. I've been very busy. If this isn't, okay. Oh, no, go, go for it. What would you have I was going to say, if this isn't stupid, I'm going to be pissed. No, one of them is really stupid. Um, okay. I'll tell that one first. So I've been really busy, really chaotic. My boyfriend has also been really busy, less chaotic. He's like much better at keeping it even keeled. And I'm the one that's like up and down, up and down. And um, I, for some reason, last weekend decided to clean out my bathroom, go through all my storage in my bathroom, my jewelry, my toiletries, everything, like get rid of the old stuff, reorganize, whatever. <clears throat> I think I was procrastinating something else I was supposed to so do. So it sounds like, smells like procrastinating. It sounds yeah. like you had something important to do at work and you weren't. Yeah, it. exactly. And I was like, oh, this will be exactly the right thing. So, and I went really, really fast. 
I was like probably hopped up on caffeine, went really fast and did all of this. I felt really happy with the end product. Um, he came over afterwards. I like showed off my new bathroom storage. I was like, look, like I did this today. And he was like, why didn't you have to write that thing? <laughs> and I was like, no, shut up. And shut we up, you're going. confused. <laughs> So then we're just like sitting, having a beer before I think going out to meet friends or something. And I was talking more about my bathroom organization because it was the only thing I did that day. And I all of a sudden was like, oh, oh no, I think I threw out all of my nice jewelry. And he was like, what? <laughs> Wouldn't the point be to just like organize it and kind of make sure that the nicest stuff is like well organized in a very yeah. specific place? And I was like, I threw out a lot of those little bags that the jewelry comes in. Like specifically, I remembered seeing one was that was the turquoise Tiffany bag. And I remember putting it in the trash sure. and I thought that it was empty when I put it in the trash. But as I was recounting this to him, I was like, oh, shoot, what if all of my nice jewelry was actually in that? And we decided or I don't know there was no other decision other than to run down to the dumpster of my apartment building and dig through the dumpster together to find this trash that I had thrown out that presumably had all my nice jewelry in it we did this we didn't find it we came back upstairs I was like oh actually I hadn't taken that trash bag out yet I think it's just in the kitchen trash can we go in there we find these turquoise Tiffany bags I open them they're empty (laughs) okay (laughs) All right. It's stupid. It's stupid. (laughs) I'm like, oh, I guess. Okay. I guess all of this was for not. I still don't know where my really nice jewelry is though. And then I had a breakthrough and realized it was in this other box in this other location and it was safe and sound the whole time. That is an example of something that made me feel very supported by and connected to my boyfriend during this (laughs) time when I am absolute chaos and I'm just stupid and just not keeping track of anything and procrastinating dumpster dove together yeah yeah for no reason for no good reason for no like reason it wasn't it wasn't even there and I tried to for make no a reason. joke of it for pretty no soon reason. after oh yeah wasn't it the right time he said it was too soon for him <laughs> <laughs> what was the joke give it to me make no I think I was just like oh remember when we dumpster dove for nothing like five minutes yeah. ago and he was like, I think tomorrow will be like better for that. Funnier. <laughs> Let me help you out with the timing of this joke for a moment. Nothing was going my way. Have you ever done some shit like that? <laughs> yeah, I've definitely done some dirty ass shit. Or like <laughs> just like, oh, I'm I'm not really there yet. And that's what I'm thinking listening to this story. Like mm. very new relationship. No. Wouldn't like, first of all, I was like born in a dumpster. There's, it's not that I'm, it's not that I'm not often in dumpsters. It's that I'm not ready to let someone else see me in a dumpster yet. So Mm -hmm. it really is a milestone. And it's so funny. There's just so many stages of getting to know someone. Sometimes I'm like, I know you so well, you know me so well, what more could there be to know? And then I remember like, we probably have, we're probably gonna end up in a dumpster eventually yeah, yeah, and yeah we're not I'm there here I'm here enough. to promise you that you're gonna end up in a dumpster the other thing that I found Please. myself doing in the last couple of weeks with him again both of us really burnt out really busy and like looking for those connection points but it's just harder at this juncture in time By so connection points you mean empty Tiffany bags that were yeah in the <laughs> look, I know how we can bond <laughs> it was a whole ruse by me to just like have a fun story with him um no he well I've talked about how he is way more introverted than me and like needs a lot more recharging alone time than I do I still need that but less and I can also do that with him there I can't do it with just anybody there but like if it's him or if it's like my best friend Kai like a handful of people yeah yeah I can just sit on the couch and have my recharging alone time and they can be in the same room and I'm still recharging he doesn't feel that way he's like I have to be totally separate (laughs) from you to get that occasionally yeah and I get and I get it whatever but we sometimes run into these junctures where it's like your need is to be completely alone and my need is to be alone with you and how can we like navigate this in a way where we both get what we need so we've 
a one-way across. mirror a one-way mirror that's what you need I think it's a one-way mirror that's where he, brilliant. you can see him but he can only see himself that's I think he wants need. to stare at himself in a mirror either if I know him well but like okay we're getting somewhere we're making progress Oh, um, I said that. Next question. Next. Next relationship problem. Yeah, I will Sorry. let him. I will let him know. <laughs> but we ended up. Does he wait? Wait. Does he listen to podcasts? Not every episode, but he listens okay. sometimes. He's not a okay. podcast guy. He doesn't even have Spotify. He's like whatever. He's super old school. He thinks he's better than us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he loves the podcast, but yeah, he doesn't listen every single time. But I tell him okay. when it has to do with him, so I will okay. report. Um. Yeah, so we ended up, he got out his computer and started playing a video game, and I just watched. And so we were, like, quiet. <laughs> it's the most <laughs> that's the kinkiest thing I've ever heard. It did make me a little horny. I think we, yeah, was, I think we did some like stuff afterwards. You were, like, <laughs> yeah. in the corner while he plays Call of Duty. <laughs> He's, like, doing to the controller what I want him to do to me, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah and use those fingers. <laughs> And he's like, Jess, can you stop breathing that way? Actually, like I can see in the reflection. Can you step to the side of the screen? Yeah, he was playing this game, not Call of Duty, not any sort of aggressive game. He was playing Nazi this game zombies. called Nazi Dave... Zombies. Whoa, is Na- that a thing? Na- Nazi Zombies is a very sexually charged. Is it? No, it's like, it's just like another zombie game. It seems like it could be sexually charged for somebody, for some sort of group that I don't want to be a part of. But um. Yeah, he was playing a game called Dave the Diver. It's like really cutesy and basic and has really calming music in the background. And I was just laying in bed watching him play. He was playing. We would like talk occasionally, but also not. I felt connected and like, oh, I'm hanging out with him while he gets to have his alone time and like just zone out for a little bit and unwind from work and stuff. And it was really nice. So these are the ways- I that, love that relationships after a while are not actually that romantic at all but like they still kind of are if you look for it in the dumpster or in the video yeah. game <laughs> I really like that especially yeah kind of cracking the code of um of that particular dynamic um I don't know that I've experienced that I don't think I've like had that problem to solve yet in a new relationship but I have that with certain friends where I'm like things are only good if I see them in a certain mood or a certain context. And then you, and then you find out like where the relationship works in Mm. that mood. And you're like, it's really good when we get our nails done together or like this works. I don't know. You know what I mean? I I love, it's like, you've got the cheating the code. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I think we're still (laughs) figuring, figuring out that balance because I really have never met anyone quite like him, which is a lot of the reason that I, like love him and am drawn to him and like want Mm -hmm. to keep understanding him because he is so good at setting his boundaries (laughs) and sticking to them like so good at communicating when he needs alone time so good at like still making me know that that has nothing to do with me but like prioritizing himself when he needs to I don't know it's like stuff that I'm really bad at or I have been really bad at in relationships in the past and he just does it so naturally and I don't think I have dated someone or even have a friend who's like that good at representing themselves um yeah, as he is crazy. but yeah it also means I have to be like oh okay I guess I guess yeah what do you need to do play a video game okay uh, can I just watch can I just watch okay cool <laughs> works for both of us yeah okay so um, I would like to remind us of Jess's honest dating profile being torn between being a mom and being a puppy and that's fucking puppy mode if I've ever seen it that's puppy oh mode. I'm such a puppy with can him. I watch yeah. can I watch can I watch <laughs> I've been the mommy in way too many relationships and I am so happy to say I am not that version of myself doesn't typically show up in this relationship it is yeah. all puppy which you know isn't that balanced either a, a little healthy mix of both would probably be <laughs> probably be ideal I don't know speaking of mommies I have like a new iteration of a sexual fantasy that which I think this is I think that's basically what this podcast is is me (laughs) making like confessing to stuff and I had one where like I don't know are you ever fantasizing um and like an image pops up that you were like surprised by and you're like I don't feel like I conjured that one but it's working for me like actually yeah yeah (laughs) 
two actually. I had two weirdly that they just like come to me if I get really lost. And then I'm like, wow, who, who set that one up? And this one, all of a sudden I was being breastfed by a man. <laughs> Speaking of mommies, I was receiving. What? Was like you were actually girl. getting nourishment from it <laughs> i was growing i was getting nourished by a man with like a really great boobs wow and i was getting fed like um i definitely i definitely have thought before about me breastfeeding somebody but this one just kind of came out of nowhere and i was like whoa but i liked it i don't know just like i kind of want to smush my face against a really round soft boob and milk it yeah totally from a totally. dude I don't I don't want it on a woman and it wasn't weird that they, like there there was no logic gap I felt like I needed to close it's just like this is just a hot guy who's breastfeeding me <laughs> yeah fuck was- yeah gender is fluid like that sounds sick honestly yeah I mean boobs definitely like I get it do you know what I, I mean? love boobs I'm always looking <laughs> at people's boobs I yeah boobs. I stare I boobs. I'm constantly looking at and touching my own boobs I'm like these are here. I'm yeah. with them all day. Some people wish they could be with them all day. I am totally. with them all day. You know what I mean? Wow, that's nice. Yeah. It's gratitude. Yeah. <laughs> that's really nice. Just Wait, I don't know. but speaking yeah. of fantasies, oh, I think that you yeah. wanted to tell everybody about something you important. dreamt up between the two of okay. them. Okay, well, the second fantasy I was going to say that came to me, this wasn't a dream. This was, I was conscious. This has happened a couple times recently where I'm fantasizing and I kind of get into like a, it almost feels like I'm tripping. I get into a drug state where all of a sudden, you know, I'm hanging out with Justin and all of a sudden I feel like um, the bed is like a hundred feet long and he's like all the way, he's all the way at the end of the bed and he, it's, he's really, really small and far away. I don't know how to describe it. Like I can't. I are you can't. high when this is happening or this is just no, all I'm your mind? always sober always sober I'll just get so deep into a fantasy that I lose track of like the of physics I lose, I lose a grasp on physics and like and like some part of me recognizes that I don't think he's been shrunk down or that my body is 100 feet long but but it really feels like that so okay your body gets 100 feet long or the bed or both um the bed is really long and my body takes up the whole thing okay length not width and no. then he, <laughs> but then you say he's really far maybe, and small maybe he's not small maybe it's just a perspective thing maybe he's just really far away does maybe he is he at small. the bottom of the tell. bed he's at the bottom of the where bed. is he okay <laughs> so small we lost him <laughs> i i can't fully like i don't know but it's like in the middle of things and i can't i can't i can't break out of it i can't break out of it so i'm just like i'm just like okay okay he's really far away right now he's really <laughs> small he's really small right now small. gotta throw him a rope fine, gotta get him back over here don't, don't overthink it i'm too i'm too far down the line too far down at the end of the bed to be a thing that it's like, you know, it's like things are close. So it's just like, he's just going to be really small for a moment. Okay. Okay. And then, I see. And then we'll I get see. back to it later. Yeah. Okay. I'm not, yeah. to if I can keep that in, I don't know if I can keep that in. Well, I don't think it's, I think it's very much your thought. Like, does he, is he also experiencing this like depth <laughs> perception like maze <laughs> while you're experiencing it? It, it is just a depth perception issue. <laughs> Oh um, no, I guess I've never, I mean, I guess I have not climaxed and asked him, did you also feel really, really small? Did you also feel really small a couple seconds ago? I've never asked him, I'm sweating. I gotta take off my sweater. There's, no, I've I, never, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna I've say that him. I will be fighting you to keep this in the podcast. This is fucking hilarious. <laughs> oh no yeah <sighs> like instead of being turning to someone being like was that good for you you should be like were you also small? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, i'm gonna have to send this one to you okay but more importantly the sexual fantasy that you were thinking about i woke up the other day i woke up the other day i've been having a lot of active dreams i woke up the other day and the first thing I was aware of was that I had just broken off a romantic engagement with Jess. 
my podcast partner. You, it's you. It's me. Um, this it's was the dream me. I had. It's a me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a dream that you and I were engaged to be wed, mm-hmm. and um, but we, but all of a sudden, I realized that we'd never had sex. We hadn't. We hadn't hooked up, and there really was no sexual component to it. And right. I was like, I, I was like, I really don't think I can, I really don't think I can have sex with Jess or a woman. I don't think I can. I don't think for me. And, right. I, and I was kind Thanks of Thanks for thinking about, about it. Of course, of course. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, and I was like, I guess I should tell Jess that I don't, I don't think I can have sex with women, but I was pretty stressed about it. And I was like, I'll just tell her after we get married. <laughs> and, <laughs> but in the meantime, you had scheduled the wedding to be like this Sunday. Like, and it was like a couple days. That's very me. <laughs> just yeah. like, can we, <laughs> just can happening. we get it done? Which is, which is everything about Jess and the podcast. Like if it was up to me there, I don't even know what we'd be doing. We'd be on like episode four. Like <laughs> Jess is the scheduler. Jess is my boss. And, um, <laughs> And so we had like a couple days coming up and I was stressed about that too, because I was particularly worried that my grandma would not be able to make it because it was such short notice and also because she was dead. And I was like, this is a lot of problems before the wedding. (laughs) Um, And so I did eventually tell you that I was like, Jess, I don't think we're ever going to hook up. And we, you like, you're like, huh, that's an interesting point. And you kind of (laughs) like, just like sat and molded over for a little bit, like tilted your head a few times. And then you're like, I don't think we should get married. And we didn't. And it wasn't a fight. It was very amicable, but it was like, um, yeah, it was very amicable. Yeah. We just had to get on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. And we, and you're like, huh, that's right. We don't have sex, I guess. Right. It's more like of an emotional sex, which I could totally see myself like just deciding for the sake of getting small for you I could totally see myself getting small for you if you needed me to (laughs) but I could totally see myself like forgoing the sexual component of a relationship to just like marry a friend like my best friend Kai and I talk about that all the time we're like what and then you wouldn't you wouldn't need sex at all no no I would just get it elsewhere like who oh, says okay. that that's the way it has to work like well Kai then, and I then could be that... married you and I could okay. be married <laughs> okay. we could maintain our boyfriends as long as they're okay with it which like they're small anyway so what if they're small anyway we can fucking move them around however we want yeah wait what is the benefit to getting married then you just want the tax break yeah with maybe it's Kai? that I mean it's like it's a, a love that you can grow old with yeah it's like I, it's not that I don't think I can have that with a man or with my boyfriend or anything like that, but it's more like I know for certain yeah. that I can have it with Kai. You know, yeah. I I'm still figuring out who and if and whatever and when that's going to be in the Kai in the like in the yeah in the that's standard heterosexual one, relationships that end up in marriage format. Yeah. But I already know that I have that with her. We've been in each other's lives for like 14 years. So why not? Aww, yeah. Doesn't mean that my relationships <laughs> on the side have to be only sexual. Like I I would still like to um, love and show affection and receive affection and like have a mental connection and whatever with my boyfriend. But like. That's generous. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> It's just yeah. a thought exercise. I just think it's no, all. No, I, I like it. I go through all these moments of like, oh, it's all fake and like marriage is fake and, uh, you know, totally. money is fake and like it's all man made and it's all fake. And like, I, I'm glad that we as a society are starting to uh-huh. question some of those things or starting to normalize like other approaches and other ways of doing it and other types of relationships and all that. I still like, I don't know. I'm straight and I want to marry a man, but sometimes I'm like, but it's fake. Like why? And I get in this like and trap still in my also head. Like it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, it's like some parts of it are fake and also like I love marriage. I'm I yeah, I want it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want it. I, mean, I like it. Yeah. Let's sign a financial contract. Um Okay, yeah. keep that part out. Keep tech out the financial contract. But like, yeah, um, I don't know. I got into this conversation with some of my cousins recently, everyone debating like the pros and cons of 
marriage and it really was just like one of my cousins making excuses for why he definitely didn't want to be married but like kind of beating around the bush and probably wasting somebody's time who wanted to be married Mm -hmm. like do whatever you want but um I had to leave the conversation it was upsetting to me to listen to someone I mean if you're not on the same page then that's a problem it's not that you have to get married but um I don't know it was a whole thing anyway can I tell you about a scam yeah marriage no go on no. I'm joking <laughs> oh, oh no 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 it no, was no. too it's... easy I had to I don't feel that way go ahead <laughs> it's not it's not marriage but it's close okay have you heard of Dunkin Donuts I give them my money almost every day yeah okay um and you know of their product called cold cream yeah, I fucking love it yeah I put it on top of my cold coffee. cream yeah so good okay are you gonna what are you gonna say do about you, it do you know what Dunkin Donuts cold cream is is it like cold cream that you put on your face but they just froth it and put it in the coffee <laughs> <laughs> I almost wish like actually like do you know like do you so you don't know you don't I don't know, know. Is? is it like no I'm scared it's fucking just regular ass whipped cream out of a can it's they just just they just they just it's just whipped cream out of a can it's not like a different like I thought it was like a different earthen material like a I thought it was like a different <laughs> natural I thought it was like earth wind fire and like cold cream was like a different thing no I fucking watch them I fucking watch them make my iced coffee with and add cold cream picked up a bottle of whipped cream and just sprayed it and then it's kind of melty because it goes on time you're drinking that's kind of melty and then it, it doesn't look quite like whipped cream it is whipped regular fucking cream out of a can with the benefit of branding very successful rebranding wow. it's not an it's not a different earthen material earthen <laughs> say earthen again <laughs> <laughs> i got okay <laughs> crazy mostly is crazy i was like how while you said that this <laughs> suffered me so bad mostly while you said that i got really distracted by the fact that when you like mime spraying um whipped cream out of a whipped cream can all it really is is you just like pushing your index finger down which is like a really (laughs) weird thing to think about like both of us kept going like whipped cream and like wiggling our index finger (laughs) so that's so I was just there but um anyway (laughs) it's yeah okay it's not different at all you're sure it's not different at all I mean, maybe, okay, here's the Because something can come out of one of those contraptions, but not exactly be whipped cream. You know what I mean? Shut the fuck up. Sit up with these fucking semantics. It's a, <laughs> it was a bottle of whipped cream with a whipped cream nozzle. It came out lip, whipped cream, and then they called it cold cream. And I was like, where did the cold cream come because from? Because they put it in the cream fridge. Out of a can. I think you have to put whipped cream in the fridge either way, so that's not even novel. What are they doing? It's whipped cream. It's whipped cream Is out it of made can. of oats? No. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where are you getting that? You getting- like oat milk. Like, on, should I Google it? No, no way. No, what I don't want to. Is cold cream? Is that what they do Duncan. at Starbucks too? They have a version what of this. What is cold? It's cold. Cold foam. Am I stupid? Cold I think it's foam. Cold foam. It's not called cold cream. <laughs> cold cream okay, is the stuff on your, that you put on that your grandma puts on her face like a type of moisturizer that's why i said that at the beginning okay. redo redo this entire bit but abby dubbing me saying foam here's a, here's a take of me saying foam alone that you can dub over foam okay wait do a pause i'm gonna try and say it regular style foam yeah we're leaving again we're leaving all of this in as is this is it's just what's happening. Oh, People knew be... what you were talking about. People knew Somebody... what you were talking about. Okay, what is, what is, okay, I've lived on a Dunkin' Donuts page. I don't trust them to tell me. Okay, here's a Reddit page. Is it, is the sweet cold foam just whipped cream? Um, And then the top answer says, bestie, I'm afraid to tell you this. Okay. Um, I see on Instagram, it is just wetty whip, wait, ready whip sweet foam from a can I literally just found out hours ago I always thought it was something they made themselves but I guess not yeah which also means that it has a lot of sugar in it yeah which I feel like I thought I was getting something it's like oh it's not milk okay here's someone 
so this it's is from lighter somebody yeah i think it actually is somebody on reddit so you know it's official um posted okay so i work at duncan and it is slightly different it is more airy and slightly less sweet which i would read as less good than whipped cream it is also more sensitive to handle because it gets flat really easy so i read that as not good whipped cream basically right healthier less sweet whipped cream yeah that's that's so, called bad whipped cream that's called cheap whipped cream like cool whip is that what it is it's like cool whip no it's not it's not cool whip it's literally whipped cream they just have like a little less sugar in it okay well that makes me feel at least the you sugar couldn't part push, i can feel you couldn't okay push, about you couldn't push Cool Whip out of a can. No, I guess you couldn't. No, it's whipped cream. Unless the it's a scam. Unless the thing had a bigger opening. Anyway, okay. Um, I'm still gonna get it. Is that okay? Um, no. <laughs> I can't stop you. <laughs> like, can I feel? Is that gonna change your order? Um, no. It's gonna right. change my. It's going to change my fucking attitude. It's going to change your, yeah. It's going to change, change the way attitude. you walk into a Duncan next time. <laughs> it's going to change my gait, my gait forever. It's going to change how I carry myself. I know what you all are up to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pissed. Give me Everything's the fucking alive. can. I think that's, that's what I'm gonna say next so time. far, they that's can't... what this episode is. Everything's I actually a lie. hate, everything is a lie. I actually hate when um certain stores have like branded like a branded sandwich name or a really cute sandwich name and they're like the ooey gooey sticker sticky fingers grilled cheese and it's like don't make me fucking say that right like, how dare you make me say that I feel like a cuck over here like don't make me say that I feel like it's just like a whole humiliation scam and um I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say cold foam anymore I'm gonna say give me the fucking can I mean, the can I know you have yeah that. the can on top spray some of the can on top they'll be like what <laughs> we can't legally put that on your bill and charge you for it if you don't say cold foam <laughs> cold foam yeah <laughs> say the words copyright can on top can on top <clears throat> I have a not a personality oh yeah you do <laughs> okay if you are constantly reminding everyone that you played a sport in high school that's great we can't be friends anymore like this is this is one not a personality and two a public announcement to people yeah. in my life like i can't <laughs> like you you're gone you're out i can't I'm you pissed. had me you had you sold me at if you're constantly reminding people don't fucking right. ever if there's something i don't know like tell me once don't make it don't ever remind me I don't even think I need to know that about you unless you're like currently still yeah. an athlete and it all started in high school and it's like pivotal to your story. Please, of course, if you just played a sport, like, look Who's at me. Doing this I did Who's too. Doing this to you? Who's doing I'm this never to you? telling anyone about it. Who's doing it to you? Uh, it's just, uh, there's not a specific person in my mind. However, it's a make type of, of person that I know okay. like 10 of. Like, Ooh. it just comes up. It's kind of the same as people talking about. And okay, whatever. Sometimes it's relevant. But there are sometimes those people who really want to tell you what they got on their SAT. And it's <gasps> like, bitch, I'm 32. How old are you? How old are you? I'm bored and I'm tired. And I, yeah, we're long past that. I don't know. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's not a personality. Yeah. Figure out what you're doing today. Tell me what you did. Honestly, the furthest back I want to go is yesterday I don't want to know about anything that happened in your life before yesterday. <laughs> before yesterday I wonder if you can come up with like an irrelevant fact about yourself to share like next time somebody tells me next time somebody tries to like humble brag about they played whatever fucking sport when I was a junior I was on Boston varsity field hockey I'm gonna be like when I was seven I ate a penny <laughs> I had to go to the ER. Also true. We also know yeah, that. Yeah, also true. true. Also equally relevant. Also true. Exactly. It, it impresses me equally. Actually, actually, I I passed an entire piece of metal through my digestive system. That's more, <laughs> impressive. more right. impressive. Right. Plenty of people. You played with a team on your field hockey team. Teams. I did that alone. I swallowed I alone. that penny alone. <laughs> Just All I had was butt. my sister laughing in my face and a doctor saying, can you swallow this orange juice for an hour? <laughs> that was all I had. I didn't have a team. <laughs> I'm self-made. I am self-supported. <laughs> mm, do you think yeah. any kid could do that? 
I, yeah, I hate them. And I'm sure that people can give, I'm sure that people can come back at me and be like, (laughs) you talk about your acapella group in high, in college or It's different though, because remember, we have to, first of all, we have to recenter. First of all, no, actually, first of all, (laughs) you're wearing a little hat. (laughs) Do you see this? This is driving me crazy. Hold on, point to it again. I'm taking a screenshot. Once again, okay. on this audio medium, audio medium, let me just inform everyone who's only listening that where I'm sitting in my living room, you can see there's a wood sconce plugged into the wall that is the exact color of my hair. And the way I'm sitting <laughs> on there, it looks like I have a tiny hat on my head and it's just annoying the shit out of me. Do you but think, get out do you like it. your hair better with that? It's uh, honestly, I feel no, it, like this is a lateral move to me. This tiny, <laughs> this, this tiny monkey hat I'm moving is like, I'm wearing is as um it suits me as well as the Brooklyn Bangs. But I want us to return to I gotta move. I got I want us to return to the definition of not a personality. The definition of not a personality is not talking about any of these things or doing any of these things, but expecting people, I think, usually to think you're more cute or more interesting mm-hmm. for it. Like you can you can the fact that you played field hockey probably does sometimes belong in a story but don't don't expect me to catch you think think catch me thinking you're cute for it right yeah you're right that is what it is although i do think it's you cute that think, i was in an acapella group cute. i was gonna say you do think you're cute you but it's not cute. it's actually not that i think i'm cute it's that i know i'm cute like i don't <laughs> I actually Sorry. don't need other people to think I'm cute on that one because I know I know that I am. Yeah. And sometimes I just need to like say that out loud, but it doesn't really matter if you're there or if you give me any reaction. <laughs> like it's fully for me. It's like the subtext that you're not saying but are implying, which I guess is the de- definition of subtext. You're saying, listen, story, story, story about acapella. I think I'm cute. You should just start saying yeah. it to people. I think I'm okay. cute. And that's the other thing. I would be happy to say that at the end of any of those stories. And I think that's what differentiates it. If these people could be a little bit more, like get a little ahead of it a little more and be like, I know, okay, whatever. I'm going to be one of those people that says that I played sports in high school, but I think I'm cool for it. I'd be like, you're dope. I love that you just said it that way. It's different. Because then they're self-aware. It's different. Yeah. Um, Tell me something. Ooh, yeah. I have a fun thing. (laughs) This could be, maybe this will be a new segment whoa whoa dog we'll see if we stick to it i know we won't i (laughs) walked into a bookstore and looked all those books and i was like no take me to the game section and i went over to the game section (laughs) and i saw this game it's a card game but it's not like there's no way to win it's just like it's just an um conversation exercise if you want to look it up it's called super theoreticals by chuck klosterman here it is. Um, 50 new questions for strange conversations. And they really are just like kind of thought provoking, interesting questions of a situation. And I've been playing them. I'm like getting drunk and playing them with Justin and um, played them a little bit with Abby, uh, our editor. We had a date who's editing this, playing with Abby. Anyway, I'm just going to pull now the deck randomly and you want to answer. Yeah, I love these. Okay. Okay. So, ooh, this is good. So first ask you to envision a specific person, the person we're going to picture right now. Um, okay, hypothetical person. You're imagining a hypothetical person. This person is a wizard. They look to be about 21 years old, but claim to have been alive since the 13th century. They look trustworthy, but you have no evidence that this wizard can be trusted. Okay, the situation. You encounter this wizard in a forest. I like you, the wizard says almost immediately. I want to make you three magical offers. The first offer is described like this. I wanna give you something. There is a chance, however, that you won't like what I give you. You're skeptical that this person is actually magical, um, but you agree to the offer. The wizard gives you a satchel and it's filled with solid gold coins. The second offer is described the same way. Still amazed by the previous gift, you nervously agree. And the wizard gives you a a photograph of yourself. It's a photograph you've never seen before, taken from a time you can't remember. You are naked in the photograph. But as you stare at the image, you can't help but concede that you look great. 
It's one of the best pictures you've ever seen yourself. This is weird. The third offer is described like this. I want to give you one final item. However, I must warn you, you will almost certainly hate it. It's possible, I suppose, that you won't. You might love it, but I really don't think you'll be able to appreciate it. Do you accept this final offer? What do you think this gift will be? Blue. Mm. <clears throat> I feel like my immediate inclination, I'm going to try not to overthink it and just give you my like first reaction. My first reaction was like, I think I would say yes. I think I would accept the offer, the third offer. Ooh, okay. Because it's a situation where I have established like and trust with this wizard and they have established that they like me. They've already shown me two good things, which I know like will play on my mindset in a situation like this and be like, oh, I'm I'm having a positive experience with this wizard <clears throat> that like I'm never going to encounter again probably. And like they've already proven some level of magic because like I haven't seen that photo before and whatever. Like I'm kind of bought in to where I'm at and having a generally positive experience with it. And then even though they tell me that I probably won't like this third thing, they also still say that it's possible that I could. And so that tells oh, me that it's not going to be like that's scary. the worst thing in the world. <laughs> you know, that, that tells me that it's not like a definite mm. negative for some reason. Mm. Like I'm such a person that will hold on to the glimmer of positive and oh, kind of be shit. like, well, I'm a person that can look at anything with a positive angle. And they kind of gave me an out and said that there I guess there is a chance that you could see it that way so I feel like for all those reasons knowing myself I would probably go for it it'll take a second for me to think about like what that thing could possibly be though um mm, but that's my immediate yeah. reaction okay 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 how about you I think I would say no What's hard with these questions is like, it's actually like, it's very different in theory to know what you would think what you would do versus, you know, reality. It's hard to actually know. But I think if someone said, I, I'm almost certain you hate it, I'd be like, that's plenty. I don't need to, don't mm. thank you. Like, I believe you. I probably will hate it. I hate a lot of stuff. Like, probably not. <laughs> it's not probably not going to be good. I don't, I don't think I need it. I can't, I already can't handle just like neutral things. I can't, I'm not going to be able to handle that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, <clears throat> I'm pretty good at like, I think for the most part, I'm pretty good at not exposing myself to things that will like trigger me. I don't know. Like I'm thinking of, I don't know when you're like hung up on an, or when you've just gone through a breakup and you're like yeah. trying not to look at your ex's social media and people are like, don't look at it. Like, it's just going to hurt. I'm like, I don't worry. I don't look at it. Like, don't worry. I yeah. won't. Um, not a problem, which I, I, I almost feel like that's kind of, an equivalent thing when you've just broken up with someone and you're like I'm probably gonna hate looking at their profile but like I might not I might not that's mm. always I think the idea that makes you look you like maybe I'll see something that'll make me feel better and you never do um but that and be like easy easy not to look yeah that's an interesting comparison because I'm the same as you in that situation I'm very good at being like yeah I'm not gonna fucking look I don't I, I, I don't think care. if there's a chance if there's a chance it'll upset me I'm mm -hmm. like not worth it I'm trying my hardest to stay I've been stable. thinking about this lately, though, a lot. And I don't think there's any specific reason that I started to think about it a lot. Just like an amalgamation of observing myself. Where I've been, I've been realizing recently that like a lot of what my life consists of is like avoiding sadness and upset and hurt and negativity at all costs oh it's like what can I do to make sure that I'm not going to be exposed to something negative that's going to like knock me down um and that's also obviously to me obviously impossible there's so many things out of our control life is full of hardship and sadness and disappointment and um unexpected hurt and pain and suffering 
And yet, like, I move through the world day to day, like, trying my hardest to avoid it. Just day, just day by day. If I can just take each day at a time and try to make that day positive and try to make the choices in that day that will set me up for like a better mood and a better outlook and a better mindset and whatever, then I'm going to do those things. And I, I don't know, like, I don't know what the right um, approach is, but I just have been becoming aware that like, I spend a lot of energy, I think, trying to protect myself from the bad. And if I know that it's going to come either way, then like, why am I trying so hard to avoid it? And so I think that maybe put <laughs> into this question for me a little bit of like, well, if what they're going to show me is maybe something in the future that's going to happen in my life, that's going to be really heartbreaking. Um, I don't know. It's like, I like to kind of live every day and let it unfold and not know what's coming. But there's mm -hmm. also an element of like, yeah, eventually like something something's coming it's not going to be rainbows and butterflies every day so like I might as well see what they have to show me if I have this like once in a lifetime opportunity and then uh trust myself to like spin it in the way that I need to make it feel okay I don't know I'm talking myself kind yeah. of out of it now but well, you're because assuming... I, I, I don't want to know what's happening in the future. If that's what the well, thing you're assuming is, then they're I showing don't. you something. You're you're assuming they're showing you something in the future. Um, Maybe it could be it could be like a box of worms, right? Right. <laughs> you know. And then um, I'd be like, okay, know. doesn't I move the it. needle. I hate it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's pretty enlightened. That's funny. I was actually thinking about that literally last night, falling asleep. Every night I fall asleep to a like a it's actually not a sleep meditation. You're supposed to be trying to be awake, but I just fall asleep to them on the Headspace app. Um, I really suggest the anxiety pack. I've probably done it like 40 times and it's like a 30 day pack. Um, I don't know how that math works out, but I really recommend the anxiety pack. It's very comforting to me. And I usually don't even listen to what the narrator is saying, but I did hear what he said last night and it was just all about like, the goal is not to be trying to avoid anxiety or trying to cure anxiety or trying to like not fall into anxiety. The key is to like, no, anxiety happens. You don't get to just eliminate that completely. Um, it's going to happen to some degree for everyone and that it's not an enemy and that you can survive it and you can like occupy space in it and let it pass. And um I don't know. I definitely heard that before. Like, of course I, on some level intellectually, I know that, but I had to like rehear it last night. Um, I think you're probably right. I think both, a bunch of us are just trying to run from pain, run from negativity, which yeah. is so silly. Intellectually, I understand it's going to happen. Yeah. And the other thing I think I intellectually know, there's like three things that I know. One is that it's going to inevitably happen. Two is that it's going to hurt. And three is that I've handled hurt and pain before, somehow gotten to the other side, been able to experience joy again. And like, that'll probably be the case again and again and again yeah. and again. So it's one of those things of like, I think just the feel, I know what the hurt feels like. Um, maybe not every form of hurt. Like I haven't experienced every negative thing that could ever happen, obviously. But like, I know what some of my lowest moments have felt like and they sucked, but then I did get to the other side, obviously. And um, so I don't know. It's like avoiding that suckage, <laughs> avoiding like that feeling of like actually being in the lowest moment, but then at the same time, there's no avoiding it. And I know I'll get to the other side of it. So then it's like, why am I avoiding it? It's a blip. And when I look back at the lowest moments I've had so far, yeah. they're blips. I, I don't feel them anymore. Right, right. But I was like so feeling them then. And I don't want to feel them anytime soon if I can help you know, it, you know. Because <laughs> part of the feeling, part of the feeling is um, that it's forever. I think that's part of the feeling that comes with it is that, oh, this is forever. 
oh, yeah. this is forever now. Um, even if you intellectually know it's not, or even if you've been through it a million times, I, I'm definitely better at remembering that in the dark moments. I'm way better at remembering it now, but I still have to each time remember it. I still have to each time be like, okay, I'm pretty sure that this one's forever though. Although I have felt that before. Right. And it hasn't ever been true before. So possibly it's not true this time. I don't know. You have to like actively persuade yourself again. Every <laughs> actively time. Yeah. convince yourself. Yeah. That's where I end up doing the thing where I like to like log my mood swings sometimes so that I can look back and be like, okay, last time I was in a really dark place. It only lasted like 48 hours or eight hours. I just have to like continue to be alive for 48 hours. And then I'll probably end up feeling something different, even though I don't really believe it. But like, according to my log, it sounds like that's what's going to happen. So that yeah. kind of helps me, but that's the feeling every time. It's like, this is forever. This is forever, which is yeah. silly. Cause I don't, I don't feel that with joy when joy comes on and elation. I'm like, Oh, this could end any minute. Oh, totally. I, oh my God. I want to keep it. Like, how do I keep it? Cause I know it's going to end. It's like, I'm so I'm immediately consumed by the fact that it doesn't last, but just like neither of the things last. Right. Yeah. With joy. It's almost like I have realized that the lead up to joy, <clears throat> if I know it's coming, good. Yeah, this like a good. vacation or a like celebratory day or like an exciting date or whatever is always more fun than the actual being in it um, because the being in it means it's almost over. It's like Christmas Eve versus Christmas Day, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I wonder if a part of that too is like, it's the lead up to joy. It's the lead up to something that you like 90% are sure will be joyful but you still can't guarantee that it'll be joyful because it's in the future. Something like really shit could happen that you didn't expect and ruin Christmas, you know, <laughs> um, which is another reason that like the Eve is better because you can just you get to live in like you're it, not expecting anything from it. Right. You're like, it's going to be fun as opposed to being mm. in it and either being like, it's fun, but it's about to end or being like, it's not as fun as I thought it was going to be. You know, what do you do? You feel like you're bracing for anything in particular right now in life that you feel like sharing to I think. don't know if there's anything I feel like I can share um I feel like there's some this might be too vague so we can take it out if it's vague and doesn't like amount like move the needle but I feel like there's some things I've been avoiding with my family and my mom in particular that I'm starting to feel like I no longer want to avoid and I want to like address with her and that is both empowering and terrifying and it's kind of like an ongoing situation an ongoing um thing that we're at odds on a lot in my life <laughs> and in my relationship with her and so I kind of like have data from the past about how it may or may not go how it likely will go based on like how I know she reacts <clears throat> to things and how I know she feels about certain things and then what I know that that does to me and what I know it does to our relationship and you know I can like be hopeful that it uh, could look different this time I can be hopeful that like I've grown in my ability to communicate certain things and to stand up for myself and um, that maybe she'll see that and respect it and like it will amount to something different but I also don't know if that's true so it's just like this looming kind of conversation or series of conversations that I want to have with her because I want to stop being in this like avoidant pattern um, but I also don't want to have it with her because I'm kind of like comfortable in the path of least resistance right now. So yeah, I think that that's probably adding to my thinking about this stuff lately of like, oh, I'm constantly avoiding sadness. I'm constantly avoiding pain. Um, I do everything I can to just like go another day of not having to deal with certain pain. Um, but it's, it probably creates a different type of pain where yeah, I'm like, I'm funny. not approaching this thing that I, a, a, a different part of me 
would feel very healed if I did approach I with her. To me, what you described just highlights, and especially thinking about the prompt, I feel like it highlights um, your slash our assumption that you know what that interaction would bring. Yeah. Um, which is not to say that it couldn't bring a lot of pain, but that a, a lot of pain from that conversation is like the last or the only thing it would bring. Mm -hmm. um, you just, I feel like it's from a distance, it's easier to see like, you just have no idea. You have no idea. Even sometimes, sometimes I do feel that in a fight where a fight comes up and it's like, you really just don't want to be having a fight but maybe it came up for a reason. And I'm not saying just like have tons of fights, but like conflict and maybe a conflict comes up that you really wish you could wish away, but it, it, and it, it like breaks people's heart for a day or a month or maybe several years. And then it affords something else on the other end. Um, it's just like, don't know. Yeah. But it's really hard. Yeah. That's what I do try to remind myself is like, it may be hard in the short term it also i don't know i really don't know maybe it maybe yeah, i'll have a know. totally different reaction than what i think i think that's unlikely mm -hmm. but fine there's space for it I, I can allow myself to be surprised and i think that's something i'm working on is like not going mm -hmm. into it expecting the outcome and like projecting that onto her and how i show up in speaking to her and that's so hard we've talked about it so many times in so many different such ways but it, it it especially shows up with family so anyway yeah i i want to go into it open i i anticipate that like the moments after and the week after and whatever time period after will be a little bit hard but you're right there could be something on the other side of that hard <laughs> that is not as hard or that is good or that is growth that's like what my whole fucking personality is built on right with peaking and stuff yeah. so I have to believe it sometimes <laughs> I believe it it's when it funny. comes to other people or I believe it like two years in retrospect but it's hard when you're leading I... up to something totally yeah just like thinking that you know how far the effects of something ripple um I do really believe that like I think I really believe this like that no single event or action has only negative or only positive consequences yeah. that like there is a mix of quote good and quote bad that come out of literally everything literally everything the most extreme thing um that like both come at all times and maybe a lot more of one and a little less of the other but right um, the reality is it will probably be both a mix yeah yeah, that's true. There's not just one outcome from things. Um, it's not that linear. So I don't know. Maybe this uh wizard in the woods can show me how that conversation will go. And maybe that's what oh. I'm not gonna like. But yeah, on, on I could also look at it with a different lens. Does it say what it is? Yeah, on the back of the card it says what it is. It says it's a box of worms. You're joking that you didn't just make that up. No, I made that up. It doesn't no. say anything on the card, but... I like this little but... game box. It is thought yeah, we finally fun. got to one that that like you know sparked an interesting conversation. I had some other was before that I liked more, but maybe maybe I'll pre-vet them next time if sure. we're gonna do one or something. You wanna lighten it up to end the episode? Yeah, please. Okay. I have a complaint. Yeah, hell yeah. And I feel like it's so on brand for me to be complaining about something that Instagram reels made me watch because <laughs> it's not me. I'm not voluntarily doing it. They're making me, they're sitting me down yeah. in my bed for two hours a night before I go to sleep and they're moving my finger and making me scroll and it's not me, it's them. And you know, claw clips that you like, those big hair clips that people, that I'm wearing one right now that are trendy mm -hmm. and help you keep it out of your face. I had one earlier today. I, I yeah. So... There's been a lot of content online about how to use them, which like yeah. I get, you know, they seem simple. They're not that simple. Men no, that I, listen to the pod. I, 
I have to watch those. I have to watch them. They are kind of tricky to get right. So like if you don't have long hair and you don't wear these, um, you don't, they look easy breezy, but they're really challenging. But then, okay. So you have several saved. So I just saw one and I think there's been more of them lately that are like, you have to put your hair in ponytails before you put it in the clip. Oh yeah. And I'm kind of like, doesn't that kind of eliminate the whole purpose of the clip then i'll just put my hair in a ponytail what we're having to pre pre put our hair up to then put them in the claw clip i can defend this one i think i can i i relate this this that's the only way i can use a claw clip because my hair pre this terrible haircut was so long and so heavy no claw clip keeps it up no claw clip keeps it up and so the claw clip is no longer to be casual cool. It's just a look. It's an accessory that I literally could right. not use unless my hair, I think also because I have a big forehead, my hair like is not anchored on my head very well. I don't understand so, like, what that has to do with the forehead. <laughs> and it literally does. I swear to God. I have I the for my the 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 surface area of my forehead is at honestly the root of most of the things that happen in my life, <laughs> such as the fact that if you try to put a ponytail or a clock up at certain points in my head, it like sinks my whole head and it won't stay up. Okay. It's not anchored, Jess. It's not right. anchored. It's, the on anchor, the front. Right. it's not anchored on the front of my okay. face. Okay. It starts in the middle of my crown. And so I have to do a ponytail to anchor the clock clip and then the clock clip. You know that not all of your hair comes out of your hairline. Don't tell me. Don't tell me about my forehead. Like don't all fucking... of Caroline's hair comes from it's one <laughs> like like unicorn. That's where uh, the anchor mane. is. Ding dong. That's where That's the, the anchor, anchor is. The oh. anchor is in the front. It's the anchor. It's, it's, the like, anchor. it's like it's like it's like this. It's like this. It's like this. It's like if you're imagine this. Imagine um the Lion King and the scene like. Okay, actually, that's not that helpful. Now imagine, I'm getting horny. I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> big cats, big cats. Imagine there's a big cliff, big cliff, like in The Lion King with Scar and everything. But um, um, but you're not falling off the cliff. You're lying flat on the top where Scar is looking down at Mufasa and Simba. You're on the top of the cliff. You're on the top, on the horizontal part of the land. Am I describing this? You're just on the land. You're just on the land. Just okay, the I'm, land. I'm standing here. On a you're just on the land you're just on the land but you're near the end of the cliff and over the top of the cliff is a big a big gust of wind that is blowing you it's threatening to blow you back right you want to stay near the edge of the cliff because because way on the other side if you go back on the land there's like a giant a pit of fire so you want to stay <laughs> near the edge of the cliff but you don't want to go you don't want to you don't want to drop off the cliff but you also don't want to go back towards the fire and the big gust of wind is coming up over the cliff I'm blowing you. And I'm saying, Jess, hold on, hold on to the ground. So it doesn't blow you back to the fire. And, and you're like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to latch my fingers over the end of the cliff. Right. So the wind blows and I'm holding on and it's blowing me and I have something to hold on to. I have an anchor. Right. And then I say, no, 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 Jess, you can't, you can't latch on over the side of the cliff. You have to just fucking somehow (laughs) dig your fingers into the top of the ground you're not allowed to you're not allowed to fold over the corner of the cliff you have to just hold on to the top of the flat ground and hold yourself on you'd be like that doesn't make any sense yeah i can't i'm not give me a claw clip you'd be like i can't i'm being blown into the fire of hell does that make sense it's an anchor it's lovely yeah, an yeah. <laughs> was that? i need was that? i'm gonna need one of our listeners who's <laughs> a visual artist to draw you think that description wasn't visual art draw <laughs> visual. something that brings together this lion king cliff analogy with caroline's hairline and like just create some art out of that and send it to me and i will replace what's hanging behind me with that (laughs) please and thank you (laughs) on the wall the framed art behind you yeah i've been wanting to change it anyway i I will (laughs) hang it up in my home did the visual though did i describe it do you understand what i'm saying right yeah, I do. I do very much understand what I you're saying. I think it was I, a, a I, perfect I analogy. I have to say that I understood it before the analogy. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, but, why'd you let me do all that? <laughs> oh, because it was a nice performance and I like thinking about the Lion King. I was wondering like, what the fire is. What's the fire, the fire like? The fire is that representative you're being of. Try- 
is that something is trying to push you back that you don't and you don't want to go back okay fire the fire well, is like on your like, hair what's the fire the fire oh on my <laughs> hair the fire is my claw clip drooping too low. okay 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 and i'm trying okay. to get all the hair to stay near the top of my head instead of my the lower nape of my neck which is the fire pit. right okay that's the fire okay i get it okay so so the the wind is gravity gravity <laughs> is trying to push all my hairs into the nape of my neck fire pit and the claw clip is you hanging on to my head oh, i'm the claw clip <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> why not <laughs> i thought it was your hair coming out of <laughs> your forehead yeah, the top of your yeah, forehead you're, yeah you're the hair yeah you're the hair <laughs> no i think the hair is the ground the hair is the ground oh okay the you are the claw clip so and i didn't I'm get saying, it <laughs> yeah i don't i don't know if i get it either what i'm saying about claw clips is that i've had a similar <laughs> problem and with them like not grabbing and staying in all of my hair but they have different size claw clip so I got a yeah. bigger size one for like yeah. the fact that I have thicker hair Big and hair. it works and I don't have to do pre-steps and I don't know okay whatever I guess if these hair people are giving providing content that's helping my boo then I'll that's allow it is. I think it is pretty much for me. I'm like, I'm like it's really like consuming that you. content. <laughs> I'm really consuming that content. I will even do a claw clip as the anchor, anchor again, for like a bun, like a top bun. That's the only way a bun will stay up on my head. I'll do that too. An entire claw clip beneath it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then it's got some nice volume too. I think I'm just mad because that content came in between all of the other content that I'm getting of just clips of the Beyonce concert, which I have been to and I do still want to watch all the clips and I'll never be tired of it. And I was just kind of like, why is this claw clip ponytail <laughs> bullshit interrupting me and the queen? <laughs> and they were like, oh, sorry, wrong text. We meant to send that to Caroline. Right. Yeah, exactly. They were um, like, oh, other other host, other host. Other host. It's cool how Instagram um, made reels just for you and for me. It is cool. They cool, love but- us cool that they made a social platform that only you and i are on well if you were on threads and i oh my God. was still on threads then we'd be the only two people on a social media platform probably because i don't think anybody could, is using that anymore <laughs> i could be so wrong about it but as soon as the thread things happened i was just like this is obviously not sticking around no you nailed it although it is stupid too because then like two weeks later elon musk changed the name of twitter to x or maybe he didn't change the name maybe he just changed the logo yeah if you go to twitter now it's a black and white x oh i thought they just of the blue bird bird. yeah i thought they just killed the bird yeah maybe it's still called twitter but either way it's like you literally created a whole the word tweet is now not the sound that a bird makes it's like what a message on your app never is. thought about that never thought about that do you know what i mean i'm like you literally tweet, created vocabulary about a tweet. for your what? platform and now you're getting rid of the iconic bird that was like your whole business and brand i think as a branding nerd i am like yeah. so perturbed by the decision it's crazy i am caught up on the fact that a bird tweets i never really put that <laughs> i am i'm saying now i feel like that was a good idea the bird for Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, guess, it was. It, it was. was. Good, I can promise it was a good idea and it worked I'm for a really long time. Texting Elon. <laughs> text him right now. He's the third Elon. person on threads because he's actually on threads too. <laughs> <laughs> Was he talking to? Was he talking to anyone? Just you. Just you. He's like, what's <laughs> happening on here? How should I change Twitter yeah. to accommodate for the new market share? considerations Ooh. okay that's all those are the biggest words i can use for 4 p.m on a friday market share considerations and tweet well i just learned a lot i think this has been not for everyone thanks for tuning in you guys um you can find us on twitter probably no probably not <laughs> no <laughs> you can find us on instagram um actually probably not because i think it, that you can only have an account if you're me and you're jess and you want to watch <laughs> oh on say, instagram real yeah, on instagram.com you can try, but um, we can find us there. Jay Z DeBakey, Instagram, not for everyone. Pod to the number four. You can find me on YouTube, Caroline Winkler. You know, you know what's good. 
And this episode was edited by Abby Newhouse, ABI Newhouse. Um, we love you. We appreciate you. I'm, that's I, that's that's it. That's it. That's it. That's enough. You, Isn't that fucking enough? Isn't that enough? You're enough. You're enough. You're, you're enough. enough. That's what Maybe I meant. We'll talk I started, about Barbie yeah. one day. <laughs> oh yeah, we good. Okay. Bye. <laughs>